Okay, looks like it's working. So chapter two, section two, this is what we're doing. And as I was talking about a moment ago, um, this is, um, it's estimating. So here's the first example they give us. Um, students are collecting dog food to give to an animal shelter. Estimate how many pounds were collected in weeks three and four. Well, here's week three, here's week four. And so we could estimate, so um, 237.5 pounds. Well, depending on how close we want to get in our estimation, um, well, look what they're doing here. They're calling it 200. I was thinking I was gonna call it 250. You see already that what I mean by subjective opinion, it's not, it's not, it, it, it's, uh, it's not uh, very accurate often. All right, um, how about this one? Uh, 345.1 for week four. Um, I was thinking I would call that 350. What do they call it? They called it 300. So 200 plus 300 is 500. In my case, 250 plus 350 is what? 600, okay? So estimating, again, it's a good skill to have, but it makes it kind of tough to grade and, and you, you have to decide, well, gosh, is their estimation way off or is it, is it pretty accurate? Let's look at the convince me here. Let's just see if that's something I want you guys to do. Thomas said that we did great in week four. We collected just about twice as many pounds as in week one. Use estimation to decide if he's right. Explain your thinking. All right, you guys look at your chart. Week one, let's take a look at that real quick. Week one, um, 172.3. So I'm gonna pull a stick here. Mr. Button, what might you use for an estimation for 172.3? What number? Give me a number, what do you think? What's close to 172.3? Yeah, 172, I, I would say that's, I, I would at least round it to tens. So you could say 175, you could say 170. It's also kind of close to 200, okay? So, I mean, 200 is pretty good. And then they're also comparing it to what? Week, um, week four and week one. So week four, what was our estimation in week four? 350, okay? So it says we collected twice as many pounds in week one. We collected just about twice as many pounds as in week one. So what's 200 plus 200? 400. So is 400 kind of close to 350? Yeah. Yeah, I, I, that's, that's a reasonable estimate. I think that could work. So um, use estimation to explain your thinking. Um, so you could say uh, 200, and I'll actually take that back here. I'll say 350 is about twice as much as 200. If we're estimating, that would work. Because that's what we're doing. We're estimating. We're not looking for exact answers. Maybe a quick answer. Let's look at another example. Yes. Uh, I will in a minute. I'm going to keep going here. All right, so look at the second example they're giving us here. It says, can you estimate the differences? And they've got 22.84 and 13.97. So let me pull a stick here. Uh, 
Ms. Maldonado, for 22.84, what might you turn that into? 22.84. Yeah, exactly. I think I would call it 20 also. And then we're subtracting. We're figuring out the difference. When we talk about difference, that means subtraction. So, Ms. Maldonado, I'm going to keep picking on you here. 13.97. What could, what, estimate that. What do you think? 10. Yeah, 10. Um, somebody might have said 15. I would have been fine with 15. Again, when we're estimating, we're not looking for an exact or precise type of answer. Okay? 20 subtract 10. 10. All right? So, look what they got. About the same thing. Looks like they did it two different ways here. One way is to round, and another way was to set, substitute compatible numbers. Okay, we've talked about rounding before. Everybody in here should know how to round. All right, so let's move down now. Guided practice. Let's take a look at a couple of these, and I'm going to cut you guys loose on this. Um, in the example above, which estimate is closer to the actual difference? And how can you tell without subtracting? Okay, I don't... How, well, um, I don't get that. How can you tell without subtracting? Yeah, I mean, if you want to s find out what the actual answer is, you're going to have to do some subtraction, um, whether it's uh, mental math or not. All right? So, um, I think... In the example above, they're talking about these two. They're talking about the 10 and they're talking about the 9. Which one is closer? And so you will, let me go back down to this. Um, let's see here. Which is closer to the actual answer? If you actually did this right here. Okay. Is 9 closer or 10? You tell me in number one. All right, number two, it says in the example on the previous page, students collected more pounds of dog food in week four than in week three. Estimate, yeah, I'm not worried about that one. Just cross that one out, number two. All right, let me move. Okay. All right, I'm looking at 3 through 10. It says, estimate each sum or difference. I'm going to start with number 3. Let's look at that together here. 49 plus 22.88 equals. All right, um, let me pull a stick here. Um... Ms. McGee's not here, that's 10 points. Uh, Mr. Cosgrove. Uh, oh, okay, well, um, we're, you've been here for a few minutes and hopefully you can figure out kind of what we're doing. So, um, what might you change 49 into to make it easier? To, yeah, exactly, thank you. So, the fact that you weren't here is not a problem. So 50 plus, and then the same thing, 22.88. I mean, what could you change that into? What do you think? Could change it to 30. Um, I think I would go with 20 because it's closer to 20. Okay. So number three, I would just do 50 plus 20 and 70. So it says to estimate each one. So for number three, I'm going to put 70 right there. All right, I'm going to do one more with you guys here. Number 10. Let's look at number 10 together. Number 10 is 576 plus, oh, put up 20 points, Mr. Cosgrove. 576 plus 94.6 uh, equals Okay, so we're going to estimate 10 points. Uh, Ms. Adams, what 576, what do you think? Uh, round it to 600. Okay, 600 plus, what do you think? For 94.6, what would you change that to? 
Yeah, I would also, 100. And so 600 plus 100 is 700. And so there's number 10 done for you, 700, okay? Now, somebody might come up with something a little bit different, but if they're not too far off, I think it'd be a good estimation. You guys see what you're doing here? You're making it easier for yourself. We're not looking for an exact answer. All right, let's look at the bottom of the page, see if there's something a little more ticklish here. It says, estimate each sum or difference. So I'm looking at, um, and this is important, we're talking about sum or difference. What does sum mean? Uh, Miss Guerin, 10 points. What does sum mean? An answer to an addition. Uh, beautiful, an answer to an addition problem. Don't, I'm not done with you yet. Uh, Ms. Karen, what does difference mean? The answer, to... the answer to a subtraction problem. So look at these problems for a second, all right? I see some subtraction problems. Number 12 is subtraction. 14 is subtraction. 16, okay? Those are subtractions. So don't just add them all, all right? So let's do, let's do, um, how about number 17 together? All right, number 17. We have a 8.1 uh, plus 3.7 plus 7.9. All right, I'm going to pull a stick here. Oh, put up 20 points. And then Miss Adams, I don't know if you put up points or not. All right, Mr. Williams. What might you change 8.1 to? 8.1, what's that kind of close to? Eight. Yeah, it is close to eight. I, I would make it even easier and maybe change it to a 10. Okay, how about 3.7? What do you think? Any idea? No? Okay. I think I would change that one to a 5. How about 7.9? That's kind of getting close to something. What would you change that to? What's that? Did, he, I, did, he, did you say something? Yeah. yeah, you'd be quiet. So what would you change that to, Mr. Williams? Ten. You said 10, yeah. Okay. And then just add them up. 10 plus 10 is 20, plus 5 more is 25. Okay, all right, put up 10 points. All right, that's how you do those. Let's look at the last page here. Um, see if there's anything really problematic. It says the cost of one DVD is $16.98. Okay. And the cost of another DVD is $9.29. Ed estimated the cost of his two DVDs to be about $27. Is his estimate higher or lower than the actual cost? So whenever they talk about an actual cost, actual cost, that means you're going to have to actually add them up. Not estimate, you're going to have to add those up. And then look and see if his estimation, which was 27, is higher or lower than the actual cost. All right, number 20. says the teacher is organized a field trip. Each bus can take seat up to 46 people. Is it better to estimate a greater or lesser number than the actual number of people going on the field trip? Why? Okay, so um, I'm going to explain this one to you guys, and I'll let you put it in your own words. It's, it's better to, um, each bus can seat up to 46 people. Is it better to estimate a greater or a lesser number than the actual number? Um, it's better to estimate, I would say greater, because of, then the odds are you won't run out of seats. Because um, you don't want to do that. Everybody's getting ready to go on a field trip, and then there's not enough seating, and then uh, um, 
uh, Mr. Delgado can't go, you know. And then we all drive away, and he's just standing there on the street, you know, looking really sad because there wasn't an, enough seats for everybody. All right, so you can put that on your own words. All right, number 21, it says the size and shape of the Golden State Golden Gate Park are often compared to the size and shape of Central Park. About how many more acres does the Golden Gate Park cover than Central Park? So you're going to have to look at this. Central Park looks like it's 843 acres. Golden Gate in San Francisco, 1,017. And it says about. When, when you ever you see that word about, it means estimate. All right? We're not looking for an exact answer. All right, 22, 23, looks like multiple choice. I think you guys can do those. And that's it. 16-minute video, not too bad. All right. Um, I'm going to end this.